Let me just first talk about, start by talking about why we do what we do. Um, Miles Monroe, who's an author that many of you may know, says that every problem that humanity grapple with, grapples with presents a business opportunity. Actually, in the session I was in earlier where Tony was facilitating, we talked about that. How many business opportunities have probably passed by as an idea during the course of the day-to-day the -to, -day to you? And what sort of responses do we put in place? And that's really where Safaricom comes from in terms of doing business. Because we believe that business has a very un unique role to play in there of sustainability and sustainable business. The other belief that we have is that business can no longer exist just to do business. And business really has to play a transformative role in what we do. We also talk about what we believe are the three Ps. And for us, the three Ps are purpose, people and profit in that order. We believe that you have to be a purposeful business to really engage with the sustainability agenda. We believe that if you're purpose driven and you have the right people with you, your profits will follow. So profits actually always come last in the way that we view our business. Another belief, we know that the world is more unequal now than it was 20 years ago and those inequalities continue to grow. And in reality, no company can actually prosper in a world that is as uneven as ours. So what's really important for us is how we take those truths and look at how they shape our business in the long run. And for us, I think you know, looking at a sustainable approach to business really, really helps drive our work forward. I'll talk a little bit about our sustainability journey which is actually, yes, up there. So we started looking at sustainability in a structured way seven years ago. It wasn't easy. Um, I think leadership also plays a very key role in driving what we wanted to do. But our sustainability challenge came from the fact that we felt that reporting on financials just wasn't really doing enough. Um, I mean, you know, your profitability may be a cause for interesting discussion, but how else can you talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in your business? And that's really where we wanted to be. We wanted to talk about our operations very honestly and transparently and see what we can do. So we really set about asking ourselves, what, are, what is our economic, our environmental, our social, and our governance impact? We set some milestones. We failed on some. We succeeded on others. But we've been tracking them for seven years on. The milestones have been really critical in terms of keeping us honest. Um, I'll share with you some statistics from our last sustainability report. You know, we talk about the fact that we haven't done well in our water and electricity footprint because it's risen by 2% and 8% respectively. We also talk year on year about the number of people that we have dismissed due to fraud, which for us is a large externality. That one is the one that always seems to grasp the headlines. I'm not sure why. We also talk about how many of our workforce are people with disabilities. We talk about the fact that at the senior levels of our business, the number of women is decreasing because these are areas of concern for us as a business, and we know that we need to do more. We talk about our carbon footprint, which as a whole is doing a lot better. Actually, in fact, we are one of the only two telecommunications companies in the world that has managed to grow our network and decrease our carbon footprint. We track this very meticulously year on year. Now, many companies wouldn't put this kind of information out there, but we believe it is these are some of the figures that actually endear us to Kenyans, endear us to the industry, and actually help us believe in our bigger purpose. And every business does have its own way of looking at sustainability, I agree. Financial institutions might look at things such as financial inclusion. Um, security companies might look at things such as paying a living wage, not just a minimum wage. Um, industries that are heavy in extractives could look more deeply at their footprint. But I think what is really important, no matter what approach you take to sustainability, is knowing three things. That you need to know your numbers, you need to show your numbers, and you need to grow your numbers. And those three things, I think, will keep all businesses very honest. Let me talk a little bit about the sustainable development goals. Yes, the sustainable development goals. For us, they form a very important framework for doing business. What's different? We don't look at the SDGs as a way of exercising our corporate social investment or our philanthropy. The SDGs for us are a way of integrating purposeful business to deliver profits. So what we've done in our business is we've looked at the 17 SDGs and we've prioritized nine of them, which we feel are important for driving business forward. Um, our nine goals, as you can see up behind me, are health, education, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, 
innovation and infrastructure, reducing inequalities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, peace and justice, and partnerships. And what we've done in our business is that every single division has to deliver product, products and projects that are SDG focused. So it's not simply lip service and saying we've integrated the SDGs. When it comes to reporting on your KPIs, you do report on SDGs. And again, because we're an honest company, when we reviewed our progress at the end of the year, it was a mixed bag. General awareness in our company is very high at 86%. But in terms of specific targets, we know that we have a lot of work to do. But let me just share some of the things that we feel are contributing towards our SDG agenda. I'll look at education, for example. We have a product called Shupavu 291, which provides affordable revision and access to quality education content at just about 10 shillings a week. Most, Kenyans, most Kenyan students in public school will not be able to afford a textbook. But what this tool does is that it provides you access to a teacher, a tutor, revision questions and tools, and allows you to study and provides you access to content. For us, this is very important. We have over three million young Kenyans and we intend to make sure that it is continuously affordable. As I mentioned around clean energy, one of the few networks that has grown our network but reduced our footprint at the same time. We looked at decent work and economic growth. And for us, it was very important to look at a group of work, workers that we all have in our businesses. Let me just call them the silent workforce. These are your Ascaris, the people who serve you tea, who clean your office. How many of us actually know what their take home wage is? Any idea? one or two. But we all know what our own salary is for take home, right? And the truth is, a lot of Kenyans come to work in our businesses. They earn a minimum wage. They don't necessarily earn a living wage. And one of the things that we started looking at is how can we as a corporate sector make sure that we look at things such as ensuring decent living conditions for all staff that work with us as a whole. When you look at goals such as reducing inequalities, a very broad area, for us very important to look at how our products and services help bridge inequalities. There's a fantastic statistic that 1% um, of the world has the same amount of wealth as 99% of the world. Yet most of our companies do business for the 1%. How do we drive our business more to, de to deliver business that is inclusive, that caters to that 99% of the world? And I think that's what's very important. An exciting one for us was looking at goal number 12 on responsible consumption and production. Interestingly, um, last year before the NEMA ban, we removed all of the plastic from our retail ecosystem. We now uh, you know, sell and use biodegradable bags. What was most interesting in this analysis is the switch actually did not cost us anything more. And we often ask ourselves as business, this is something we should have done ages ago. So again, to all of you here who run businesses, sometimes we think that the cost of switch to more environmentally friendly solutions will cost more. It may in the long run, but actually it may not even cost more in the short run. So simple decision, but great impact for us. What I'd like to end by saying really is that for me, um, sustainability really cannot be practiced in isolation. I think what's very important, I really want to congratulate Karen and the rest of the group on this, is that it's really important to bring practitioners together because you know it's a new and probably nascent area for Kenya, but more importantly, we need to build more networks, share more lessons, and understand what is possible more. Uh, I also want to look at uh, entities such as the UN Global Compact or the Global Compact Network Kenya, the B Team, other places that are beginning to build up pools of resource and knowledge on the sustainable development goals. I think as Kenya, we really stand at a point of inflection. We could take the path of rapid economic growth and focus on the metrics and the numbers, or we could take a path of more inclusive growth. And I think those are some of the issues that we're here to discuss today. What is really important is to recognize that yes, government and policymakers have an important role to play, but as does the private sector. Um, issues such as rising carbon, growing global hunger, unemployment and social discontent are things that if we don't address as business, will actually not allow us to prosper and thrive. So I think my closing comments to you all is that from a private sector perspective, we do need to take action around future-proofing our business operations, driving more values-driven work and sustainable business, and ensuring that we can really work at bridging these inequalities.
And the reason why this is important is I think, like all of us, we do want to stay in business for the next 100 years. And that, I believe, is what really drives sustainable business. So I just want to end by quoting what I think is my most important positioning around sustainability, which is that we really cannot practice this in isolation. So it's fantastic to have all of you here and to continue to share all of the lessons around sustainable business and see how we can all change the future of Kenyan business and global impact. Thank you very much.